Saving for a house deposit is pretty hard, but saving for a house deposit in just one year is even harder. That's why I wanted to talk today about how to save for a house in a year. All right, this is not gonna be an easy task, so let's tackle it and let me give you some ideas on how you can achieve this. Hey, I'm Ryan from On Property, your daily dose of property education and inspiration. Every single day, we come at you with a new property episode, which comes out in video, audio, and in blog format as well. If you wanna get access to our free report that shows you 10 real positive cash flow properties in Australia, go to onproperty.com.au forward slash free. All right, so let's get into it and talk about how to save for a house in a year. Firstly, we need to look at some considerations that you need to take into account or some considerations that people will take into account about you before you can go ahead and start saving. Firstly, you need to look at your borrowing capacity. This is the amount of money that a bank or a lender is willing to lend to you in order to buy a house. It's all well and good that you go out and you save a deposit for a house, but if a bank isn't gonna lend you the money you need to buy it, that's completely wasted. So what you should do before you decide on how much you wanna save and before you get right into it, go and see a mortgage broker or give a mortgage broker a call on the phone and ask them about your borrowing capacity. They're just gonna ask you a few questions about your employment, uh, your dependents, what your spouse earns, all of that sort of stuff, and then their software will be able to tell you exactly how much you can borrow. This will be so powerful when saving a deposit because you know once your deposit's saved, you can then go out there and you can actually purchase a property. If you want my mortgage broker to give you a call so you can find out your borrowing capacity, just go to onproperty.com.au forward slash mortgage and put in your name and phone number and he'll give you a call and sort all of that out for you. Another consideration you need to take into account is proven savings. Now this is something that the banks look at if you've got a deposit less than 20%, sometimes even if you've got that 20% deposit. They wanna see that you can actually save money because for some reason, obviously that means that you're probably more likely to pay off a mortgage. So if you're getting a gift from someone, maybe from your parents or something like that, um, that may cause issues if you don't have proven savings. So this is savings that you've accumulated over time. Every bank looks at this differently. Some of them just look at the amount of money that you've held in a bank account for over three months and others look at consistent growth that you've seen in your savings. You also need to consider lender's mortgage insurance. So if you're gonna be saving a 5% deposit, well then you're probably gonna need to pay lender's mortgage insurance. In a lot of cases you can add this to the loan, uh, but in some cases you will need to pay for it. So you just need to consider whether you want to have lender's mortgage insurance or whether you wanna save a larger deposit and go against it. Now in episode 200, which you can get at onproperty.com.au forward slash 200, I talked in more detail about whether you should save a big or a small deposit. Last thing to take into account is your stamp duty and your costs. It's all well and good to say, I'm gonna buy a $500,000 house and save a 20% deposit. Bam, that's $100,000. Easy, um, straightforward target. Not an easy target to hit, but it's a straightforward target. But you also need to take into account stamp duty and your other costs as well, which can be, I, I would say, like a rough estimate, probably about 6% of the purchase price of your property is a really rough estimate. So let's say you want to buy a $200,000 property and you want to save a 5% deposit. Well, that means that you need to save $10,000, but you'd probably really need to add another 5 to 6% on that because of your stamp duty and your other costs. So you're looking at another $10,000, maybe 12,000, maybe 15,000, something like that. All right, so now that we're taking those considerations into account, how are we actually gonna go out and do this? How are we actually going to save our deposit in one year? Well, step number one, which is we've already really talked about in the considerations, but it's to find out your borrowing capacity. So go to a mortgage broker or get my mortgage broker to call you, find out your borrowing capacity so you know what you're working with. So you know what you can afford, you know what you can't afford, and your savings targets can be realistic. Again, if you want my mortgage broker to call you, it's just onproperty.com.au forward slash mortgage. 
and you can fill in the little form there and he'll give you a call and sort that out for you. You can use online calculators, but these tend not to be very accurate. And just because you used an online calculator doesn't mean you can then go to that bank and say, look, I use this online calculator. It said you'd lend me $500,000. Let me borrow $500,000. And they, they might say no, like it's not a binding agreement. By finding out your borrowing capacity, you can also get pre-approval, uh, which can really help you in the future. All right, step number two is to then choose your purchase price. So once you know what you can borrow, then choose the purchase price of your property. This might be dependent on the area that you're going to invest in, maybe houses where you live are $450,000 to buy, maybe they're $800,000 to buy. Uh, choose your purchase price either based off the area that you're living in or based off whatever, you know, where you want to invest. Step number three is then to work out your savings target. So start by looking at the percentage of a deposit that you're going to save. Is it gonna be 5%, is it gonna be 10%, or is it going to be 20%? And work that out from the purchase price. So again, a $500,000 property, and you wanna save a 20% deposit, that's $100,000. Then you need to add things like stamp duty and costs and stuff like that. Now you can just go into Google and search stamp duty calculators if you want an accurate representation of how much stamp duty you're going to need to pay, or you can just add a simple amount. Like I said, around that 6% mark, you could just add that to your purchase price in how much you need to save. Step number four is then break it down. Break down your savings target. Let's say we've got that $500,000 property and we are saving a 20% deposit and that's $100,000. Now, I'm just going to ignore stamp duty and stuff like that just for ease of calculation in this circumstance, but you would add it on. So if I divide that by 12, that gives me a monthly savings target of $8,333. If I divide it by 52, that gives me a weekly target of $1,923. And if I divide it by 365, that gives me a daily target of $274. Now, Saving $100,000 in one year is going to be very unrealistic for most people, uh, but maybe it's that $200,000 house where you wanna save a 5% deposit, so you're looking at $10,000 or maybe $20,000. So rather than $8,000 a month you need to save, it might be somewhere between you know, $800 and $1,500 that you need to save per month, which would bring your weekly target down to somewhere around $200, maybe $300 a week, or your daily target down to you know 30 bucks a day or 50 bucks a day or something like that. Um, no, it would be less. Anyway, my calculations are off. Don't take that. But basically, what you do is you work out your savings target and then break it down into a daily amount. Step number five is to then, uh, if, if you find that that daily amount or that weekly amount or that monthly amount is too much for you to save, we need to go ahead and lower your purchase price. So this might mean looking out of the area that you really wanna buy in. It might be looking at other potential investments in other areas that aren't as expensive. Step number six would be to re repeat step three and four. So you'd go back with this cheaper purchase price, work out your savings target, and you then break it down again. Is this achievable for you? It's all well and good to say you wanna save $100,000 in a year, but if you're only earning $60,000 a year, well, is that gonna happen? No, not really, unless you win lottery or something like that. So what we wanna do is we wanna get a really achievable target that we can save towards. Step number seven is to pay yourself first. Okay, so when we're doing our savings target, rather than saying, here's what I wanna save, let me try and live my life, and whatever's left over, I'll save. Rather than doing that, the best strategy that I have ever seen is to pay yourself first. So put your savings away first and then work out a way to live off the rest, which is step number eight. Learn to live off the rest or increase your income so that you can afford to live off the rest. Tip number nine is to rent, um, is the fact that rent can count towards your deposit or towards your proven savings but you're going to need to have probably at least 12 months rent and you're gonna to have to pay rent on time every time. Like don't miss a rent payment at all. So because a lot of banks now with the rents, 
if you've got a record of paying rent over and over, they can actually count that as your proven savings in some cases, or they can actually count it towards your deposit. Even though you're not giving them any money, they see you as less risky, and therefore they might be able to waive lenders mortgage insurance, or might be able to help you out there. So I haven't given any precise tips on how to save more money and stuff like that, but that's because I've already done a blog post on it. And again, just go into Google and just type how to save a house deposit or tips to save a house deposit or something like that, and you'll see my article. It comes up in the top three almost every time. It's got 20 tips on how you can save your house deposit, and I'll link up to that in this episode, which is you can find it on property.com.au forward slash 201. So saving a deposit is hard, it's not easy, it is a slog, and it can take time. If you can do it in a year, then more power to you, but even if it takes longer than a year, remember this is your financial future that you're working towards, it's not just you know a nice thing that you wanna achieve, it's gonna completely transform your life. So even if it takes you a little bit longer than a year to save it, don't give up, because it is very difficult, and it is very easy to give up such a long-term goal, saving a deposit and not really seeing anything for it. But stick with it and eventually, even if it takes you 10 or 20 years to build up that property portfolio, it's going to change your financial life and provide you with so much more security and so much more financial freedom if you invest correctly, obviously. Hashtag disclaimer, I can't guarantee that you're going to get rich or financially free. So thank you for watching this episode. Again, if you want access to that list of 10 real positive cash flow properties in Australia, go to onproperty.com.au forward slash free. And until tomorrow when the next episode comes out, remember that your long-term success is only achieved one day at a time.